Hi guys, this is the second video that we're going to be doing in a series on how to make your own video camera for security purposes. This video is going to focus on dev board with USB cameras and how you can set up the software stack to use this with an NVR or DVR. If you haven't checked out the first video, check out the video. It's linked in the video description down below where I talk about hardware. And I talk about a couple of the dev boards that I use in experimenting with this. And it works on all the dev boards I've tried, including a Raspberry Pi, a Rock 4C Plus, and a Libre Computer Renegade. I also tried out several different cameras. I tried out everything from a $10 camera up to a $90 camera, and there's a lot of space in between. So you can pretty much use any USB camera as long as it'll work with a Raspberry Pi. It'll probably work with any of these other dev boards as well. So this particular setup is going to be able to use your camera and your dev board to create a device that you can plug into a network, and then you will be able to connect that device to an NVR or DVR, just like you would an IP-based camera that you buy from Amazon. Now, this is not the most economical way to do this, but it gives you a lot of variability and how you can power the device as well as the camera options available to you. So the approach I'm going to show you will probably work with most of the available hardware that's out there. It uses some of the standard libraries that are available on most every distro of Linux, regardless of the hardware that you're using. So if you're using a dev board and you're using a USB camera, this approach will probably work. I can't guarantee it'll work for everything, but this is a very common stack of software that's going to work for this particular utility. Now to show you how to uh, configure the software, uh, I'm going to use an SSH terminal terminal to connect to my board. Now you can run these directly on the board itself. You can plug a keyboard and a monitor into the board and then configure it directly on the board, or you can use SSH into the board if you want to do it that way. So the first thing that we'll need to install is FFmpeg. Now FFmpeg is a set of tools that are useful for doing video decoding and encoding. So basically it allows us to record video if I want to, to a file, or I can record it to a stream. I can convert video formats from like AVI to MPEG-4, or I could take a bunch of images and convert those to a video file if I wanted to do that. There's all kinds of things that you can do with FFmpeg, but still one of the most popular things that you can do with it is use it for streaming purposes. So what I can do with FFmpeg is basically create a stream from my camera and then encode that stream and put it onto a network. So let's install this using apt-get. So you need to is type in sudo apt-get and then do install, and then you would do FFmpeg. Now, if you're using an RPM based distro, you would use yum, but it'd still be the same basic command sudo yum install ffmpeg. And then you've put in your password and uh, that is going to download and install all the dependencies. Now I've already installed it on this board, but once it's installed, you're ready to go there. So the next thing we need to install is an app called Media MTX. Now this used to be called Simple RTSP Server, but it's taking on other streaming protocols like HLS and WebRTC. So it's more than just an RTSP server, but it's a great piece of software that makes a lot of things simple. And uh, it's very easy to install too. You just need to download the pre-compiled binaries. You can build it if you want to, but it's not something that you have to build. So again, it's pretty straightforward. So you can scroll down here and you can get the uh, latest version for your platform. Now we're using a dev board, so it's either gonna be a 32-bit dev board or a 64-bit dev board. So a 64-bit dev board would be an ARM64 V8. Now an older board would probably be an ARM V6, and ARM V7 is probably gonna be most Raspberry Pis since like Raspberry Pi 2 and on. So it's probably either going to be this one for a 32-bit operating system or this one for a 64-bit operating system. So I'm going to grab this one right here and I'm going to copy this link. Now we're going to come back down here to our terminal and we're going to basically download this into our board. So you can do wget um, and um, paste in that URL and it's going to download uh, this piece of software, uh, Media MTX, and if you do that LS, you can see that it's there. And then we're going to untar it. So we're going to do tar xf, and then we're going to do Media um, MTX and the whole uh, line there, uh, and then just extract the contents of that. And if we do LS, we now have Media MTX, and that's an executable file that I can now run on my device. The next thing to do is start Media MTX, and that's pretty straightforward, but we're going to start it in the background. So the way to do that is in that folder where you downloaded it, you can type Media MTX and then do ampersand, and that's going to start it in the background. Although the output might come here, you can still run commands uh, like this. And you can see that I'm running ls like that, and it's showing me that I have output. I can do ps-a and show you that it's actually running right there. 
So the media MDX server is now running. Now I need to run FFmpeg to connect to this guy. So I'm gonna walk through FFmpeg now. FFmpeg is of course the utility to use uh, for setting up the stream. Now media MTX is basically just there to serve the stream up. FFmpeg does that, all the heavy lifting though. And so FFmpeg um, is the utility to call and it's got a lot of parameters on it. So let's walk through all of these. I will copy this command and put it into the video description so you can copy and tweak this to your liking. So the first thing to do is of course, put an FFmpeg, that's the command to run. Dash F tells you the source of the video feed, essentially the libraries and drivers you're gonna be using. And this is using video for Linux, which is this V412 right here. That's probably not going to change unless you just have a camera that is a, one of the ones I've mentioned, either the Raspi camera or a USB camera. You might have some specialty camera that doesn't use video for Linux. And so you would have to figure out what that is going to be for your device. However, if you're not sure, just go with video for Linux and you're probably going to be OK there. Now, frame rate and video size determine the quality of your video. Frame rate, of course, is frames per second. And there's a trade-off between video size and frame rate. This depends on how much performance your board has and also what your camera can do. So if you have a high quality camera, it can probably have a high resolution feed with high frame rates. If you have a lower quality camera, it might not be able to do high video sizes or a high resolution video at high frame rates. So it just depends on the hardware that you have. So you'll have to figure out the best mix. If you put in a high frame rate, and the device can't support it, it, FFmpeg is gonna do the best it can to support that at whatever rate it can actually achieve. You'll have to figure out what the optimal frame rate for your particular device is gonna be. Now, I'll show you how to do that in just a minute once we get through this. I'll show you one, how to figure out what your device will support and also how to get a list of devices. So these next few parameters are controlling the output. So we're basically going to be looking at what library we're gonna be using. So dash C colon V is the library to use and the one that we're most commonly using is libx264, which is an H.264 encoding, which is very popular in streaming applications, especially RTSP applications. The next one is the PIX format. Now this is basically the encoding for the streaming application itself. If you're not sure, use yub for 20 p It's very common for streaming applications, especially webcams. So if you're going to use another one and you're sure what that is, use it. Otherwise just use yub 420 p Preset basically controls how much CPU processing that you're going to, going to be applying to the stream. So ultra fast is probably fine for most security camera applications. It's not going to have the most fine looking picture, but for security purposes, it's going to be good enough because it, if you go any more than that, it's going to use a lot more CPU than what you would otherwise get out of FFmpeg. So it could suffer in terms of frames per second or the resolution, or in some cases it might not even work because it's just draining all of the CPU available on your device. So stick with ultra fast and you're probably going to be fine there. And this one is the bit rate, B dash B colon V is the bit rate that you're aiming for. In this case, it's 600K bit rate. And so that's going to be fine for this application as well. So for the most part, unless you really know what you're doing, just leave these as is, and they're probably going to be fine. So the slash parameter is the destination. So we're gonna say, send it to an RTSP output. So we're gonna do dash F RTSP. And then this is the endpoint. So this is going to send it to the media MTX server on port 8554. And this is the path for the stream. So we can say my cam, it doesn't have to be that. You can put anything, we can put blaze cam or any other kind of name that you want to put in there. And this is where it's going to write out to. And this is also where we'll connect once we have our client ready to pick up the stream from the server. The next thing to do is to figure out what our device is. So we're going to use the video for Linux command line utility to do this. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to use v4l2 dash ctl or video for Linux cuddle. And we're going to do dash dash list dash devices. And this is going to list all of our devices that we have attached to video for Linux. So you see that I have a Logitech webcam C90 C930E attached to this guy, and it's it's showing up on two different locations, video zero and video one. So video zero is probably the one that I wanna use. If that doesn't work, try video one. So the next thing to do is to run the command after you figured out where your camera is mounted. And I'm going to just simply copy and paste this into the command prompt or the, the terminal here. And that's gonna start FFmpeg. You should see some output that looks something like this. It's going to start streaming this to MediaMTX, which I'm already running in the background. 
Now I need to connect a client to that and that client is gonna look a lot like this URL here, but instead of localhost, I'm gonna put in the IP address of the dev board and that's 10.0.1.87 in my case. And I'm going to copy this and I'm gonna use VLC uh, to actually connect to this. So I'm gonna uh, open up VLC and open network stream. Now this is a good way to test the, the stream to see how well it performs. So I'm gonna click play and this should connect VLC to that stream. Okay, there I am right there. You can see that I'm recording. And uh, so the, the, the camera actually looks pretty decent now. And you can see that I have the stream coming off of my camera onto my screen right here. And there's a little lag because it is doing some encoding on it. And there is a, a slight lag for security camera purposes. So this isn't live view, but it's still uh, pretty close to real time. So this would work fine for surveillance purposes. So if you want to play with the settings, some, some of the things that you can do, of course, are change the video size, and that's going to allow you to have higher frame rates typically. Uh, so if the frame rates uh, aren't quite up to what you want them to be, you need to reduce the video size. And then if that bitmeg will try to bump those up or depend on your camera, to, if it will allow you to have a higher frame rate at the higher resolution, all depends on the hardware that you have available to you. You can also try to have a higher bit rate too. Sometimes that will give you a little bit more bandwidth to uh, cram more data into. In any case, all of these parameters will help you tweak those. Um, I've actually changed mine to 800 by 600 at, on occasion uh, to get higher frame rates. But for the purposes of surveillance, higher resolution is generally better than uh, something like a higher frame rate because you want the higher resolution to be able to see what's actually going on. Uh, so you could use this and you could test it again using this um, VLC. But once you're satisfied with this, now uh, the next thing to do is actually connect this up to your DVR or your NVR. So this is an, a four by six ratio using 800 by 600. And it's still pretty decent, but in any case, you can see that it's working here. So the next thing to do is to set up this stuff so it will start at boot. So once you figure out all the parameters that you're gonna put in, you're gonna create a file called RC local that will run when the machine boots. So to start media MTX, you just simply put the command just like we did in the console like this into the file and that will run it in the background. And then this right here uh, will allow us to run FFmpeg in the background. It's gonna redirect output to a log file, then redirect input from dev slash null, which basically will allow this to run in the background without requiring uh, the console to run this. And it will say exit zero. So basically it's gonna start in media MTX, start at FFmpeg, and then the stream will start running when this machine boots up. So to do this, uh, we're going to use a, an app called Nano. So we're gonna use, I'm gonna get into the terminal um, right here by using sudo nano, and then I'm gonna do slash etc slash rc.local on this folder right here. And uh, I'm gonna put in my password. And I'm just gonna paste the contents of that uh, that little script I wrote into this fo folder right here and say, write that, and then hit control X. And then I'm gonna ch mod the file uh, to plus X. I'm gonna use sudo again, um, sudo ch mod plus X and do just ec slash rc dot local. And that will start the file whenever the machine boots. Now, one other thing that I need to do is move this file into a place that I can find it whenever I'm anywhere on the file system. So uh, rather than typing in slash dot slash media MTX, I'm just gonna move it. So I'm gonna do, uh, you can do copy or move, whichever you wanna do. I'm gonna do move here and I'm gonna use sudo move, sudo move media MTX and I'm gonna move it to slash USR slash bin. And that's a, a folder that contains a lot of binaries and um, that's going to put it there. And then I'm going to uh, chone it, basically um, do a ch sudo uh, chone and I'm gonna make it root, um, root colon root. And then I'm going to say for um, slash usr slash bin slash media mtx and uh, that will own it for root. And now I can execute that as the root user, which the machine is gonna boot as. So uh, with all that, now when I reboot this, the camera will come back up. Now, the last thing to do is to configure my DVR. Now that my camera is as functional and it's up and running, I can now connect my DVR to this. So I'm using iSpy's agent DVR. So I'm going to uh, start this guy up and uh, open it up in a new window. 
and uh, this will give me the configuration for this. And so here is the DVR. I'm going to put it right down here. I've got it set as uh, offline camera right here. So I'm going to just gonna reconfigure this camera uh, to use it. You can add a new one uh, if you want to do that, but you can also configure an existing camera. And I'm going to use the network source here. And I'm just going to put that uh, URL into the live feed for this. And um, now I can then click OK and OK. And then there is my camera right there running. And I'll lean back and wave to the camera. And you can see me on my DVR now uh, streaming into the browser. So all this is functioning as a DVR now. Uh, and I haven't turned on any of the notifications for this camera yet, but that's pretty straightforward uh, once I have it streaming back to my uh, NVR. So I can change that simply by coming over here and then copying the settings uh, from my my the one I typically like to use is my driveway camera or rather my uh, garage camera and um, copy all the settings to camera six and click OK. And now this one is now uh, streaming uh, for detection and all the other kinds of goodies that I do for all of my uh, other cameras. So um, everything is up and running now on my DVR using my homemade DIY security camera. So in this video, we covered how you can use a USB camera with a dev board and a stack of software to create a security camera that you can connect to a DVR or NVR. I'm going to do another video that's going to use the Raspberry Pi camera with a Raspberry Pi. And in my opinion, this is a better approach because it seems to be a lot less laggy in the performance of what you get from that camera. It doesn't have to do the video encoding like you do with this particular solution with FFmpeg. And when you don't have to do the encoding, you get much better quality video. And that also means that you're going to have sharper images and better streams that are coming from that camera. If you like this video, please comment in the comment section down below and let me know your thoughts and also look forward to the video that will be coming out using a Raspberry Pi camera. And as always, like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.